now uh, uh, reconvene. Uh, we suspended the session yesterday on the matter of the immigration uh, bill. Uh, and uh, we still have a quorum as uh, uh, we had yesterday, and that will uh, suffice. In the meantime, uh, uh, the Secretary of the Committee will uh, make sure that if there are any other senators who are willing to show up, please give them a call. In the meantime, we shall proceed uh, uh, with the presentation. I understand the Commission on Immigration as a presentation. Welcome to everybody. Commissioner Morente, are you there? Uh, good morning, Honorable Chairman, uh, Senator Gordon, sir. I'm here. Yes, you're here. Okay. All right. Yes, Can sir. you introduce to me who are the people with you right now? So very fast because we don't have much time. Yes, sir. Uh, Honorable Chairman, we have the uh, Deputy Commissioner uh, Javier uh, with us and the, the other division heads and uh, section chiefs uh, of the Bureau of Immigration, Your Honor. All right. Uh, later on, you can proceed to show me your uh, organizational chart and show me who the people are that are involved in those uh, sections. Uh, yes, sir. Let me let me start and make you a premise. We are really, really running. We have to really finish this. If we can finish it by tomorrow, that would be great. We may be able to submit it to the committee. You have uh, uh, you have to file it. Uh, there is already a bill in the lower house approved, right? Uh, yes, Your Honor, uh, House Bill uh, 8850. All right. And then uh, uh, once we're approved in the Senate, which is like as I'm doing because there are so many bills filed up, uh, we would have to uh, uh, approve this. And once it is approved, after interpretation and after after amendments, uh, this will have to go, uh, once it's approved, it will have to go on a bicameral conference committee, which I hope will be fast. Uh, so we may have a chance next week to... Uh, uh, to have it approved. But right now, it's not looking very good, but I'm really giving it that old college try. We've been so busy this year, and I apologize if we have not been able to give it importance. So I let's try to keep the bill simple so that uh, we can get it done, and then later on, we can fix it in the coming uh, Congresses. Would that be all right with you? Uh, yes, Your Honor. We understand uh, the time element that uh, is being faced by uh, Senate and uh, we hope uh, with the few session days left, uh, we could have a uh, new immigration law. Uh, well, if we have to, we have to call sessions at night. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I uh, will do uh, that for you. All right? Although yes, sir. I'm really, really tired with all the things that I have to do. I still have the Blue Ribbon Committee report that I have to finish. Uh, yes, sir. On, on Thursday. So go ahead. Uh, make your presentation very quick, very succinct. And I'm I'm more interested in the theory and the uh, and the whole purpose of immigration. So let's not keep it complicated. All right? Yes, sir. Uh, Your Honor, uh, before uh, we proceed with the briefing presentation, may I be permitted to give a short manifestation on behalf of the bureau, sir? Proceed. Yes, sir. Uh, we thank the Committee of Justice of the Senate of the Philippines, chaired by the Honorable Richard Gordon, for its support, for his support to the Bureau of Immigration's continuing pursuit of the passage of the new immigration law. We would also like to acknowledge the Honorable Senators who sponsored the respective BI modernization bills, namely Senator uh, Juan Miguel Zubiri, Senator Amy Marcos, Senator Christopher Bongo, and Senator De La Rosa. Many events have occurred since the passage of Commonwealth Act Number no. 613 or the Philippine Immigration Law of 1940, aside from its outdated provisions. Many developments have changed the global village and its borders, making it even more urgent for a new law to enable operational upgrades and innovations. The new Philippine Immigration Law proposed is the game changer that will enable the Bureau of Immigration to perform its duties and fulfill its mandate, given the evolving immigration landscape. Among the many changes that can be implemented for the new law, these are of utmost importance, is the, are the reorganization of the structure of the Bureau of Immigration, the definition of specific responsibilities, the definition of uh, visa categories, the implementation of safeguards, 
for checks and balances and the improvement of the salaries and benefits of the BI, person, BI personnel. We see the new immigration laws a means to address key concerns, particularly organizational changes, such as the creation of new divisions and offices, to streamline the workflow and processes, the recalibration of the disciplining authority of the commissioner for minor and lesser offenses, the upgrading of positions within the organizational framework, the strengthening of anti-corruption measures, and the redefinition of the appointing authority of the commissioner. Given the role of the Bureau in border protection and national security, we hope that through the timely and sustained efforts of the Committee of Justice of the Senate, uh, chaired by the Honorable Chairman, there will soon be a new Philippine immigration law. Thank you, sir. Uh, we will proceed with the briefing. Uh, it will be presented by the Chief of the Legal Division of uh, the Bureau of Immigration, Attorney Arvin Santos. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Excuse me, excuse me uh, Commissioner Morente. I would appreciate it very much if you could uh, give me a background uh, right away on the overview of what you uh, folks do. No? Uh, uh I, I have a pretty good idea what you do but uh, what is it that you want change and uh you know i'm looking at the history of immigration throughout the whole world and uh what are our threats to immigration what are our initiatives to immigration those are the things that i make to it go ahead please yes sir uh the policy objectives uh that we intend uh first first of all sir we uh, recommend uh, to the Senate the version passed in the House of Representatives because it, because it has uh, undergone the thorough discussion with the uh, concerned agencies, concerned uh, departments of government. And uh, it has been discussed over the years uh, before it was passed. No, I, I would like to go back to basics now. Uh, I know more or less. I'm a lawyer. I studied immigration law. Tama uh, mission to control and regulate the movement of persons to, from, and within our country and contribute to national security and development. And <laughs> you're a gatekeeper, you want to bring the good guys in and you don't want to bring the bad guys in. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, we will work on the philosophy that uh, Philippine immigration policy should be a strategy for economic growth involving immigration control, which, of course, would be uh, controlling, uh, ensuring that only legitimate tourists, businessmen, and investors are allowed, and preventing undesirable aliens to enter our country. So part of your threat would be in the in this day and 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 in this day and world, uh, you are you are worried about people who will do economic sabotage, who will do terrorism in our country, who will try to take advantage of our laws to try to work here without a permit and stuff like that. So that is the first part of the gatekeeping. Beyond the gatekeeping. Yes, you have to have an enforcement to make sure that you're able to catch all these guys that were able to get in. Would that be correct, sir? Yes, uh, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this would be as part of the adjunct of uh, the law enforcement role as gatekeepers of uh, the Bureau of Immigration. And um, moving forward, sir, uh, we also would like to have uh, the Philippine immigration policy as a strategy also for facilitation of trade and travel. This would mean that uh, the Philippines would need uh, tourist and foreign investments to enliven our economy. And uh, this would be in compliance also to the commitment of the country to facilitate. No, that is more or less what I stated, about to bring the good guys in, like yes, sir. investors and everything, uh, retirees that are legitimate, stuff like that. But you don't want the terrorists, you don't want the uh white slave traffickers you don't want uh, all the other guys so that you have to have a very eagle eye and to do that you would have to modernize and get information and get support from other countries to know who are the uh possible uh, linkages of all these people that might come in would that be correct uh that's very correct sir uh, because of the evolving landscape uh the globalization of uh, the world uh, new threats uh, of course as you had mentioned Terrorism, trafficking in persons or human smuggling, or drugs. transnational crime, drugs, child prostitution. These the are the challenges faced. So, yes, so you're the gatekeepers, all right? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead, please. And also, uh, one of the main functions or uh, 
main role, responsibility of Bureau of Immigration is to extend uh, the protection of overseas Filipino workers. This would mean that uh, we would be uh, focusing on the prevention of uh, the protection, the protection, I mean, of Filipinos from exploitation and abuse abroad by illegal recruiters and human traffickers uh, in coordination with the anti trafficking in persons. Uh, that, that would mean that would mean that uh, that that would be a very ticklish situation because the right to travel travel is sacrosanct, right? And uh, you're playing God when you say you cannot go. I, I have a particular incident in mind, but I'm not going to bring it up now. But uh, that means you have to have the guidelines that are very strict uh, that you cannot just uh, hold somebody uh, who is le le legitimately traveling, even if you know he might be looking for a job, because that is a heuristic notion by any person, any country uh, who wants to go, let's say, to America to try and go in there and um, uh, I pretend that he's a traffic, uh, he's a tourist, and in reality he's uh, looking for a job, or for that matter, people are trafficking, right? So I understand that. That's why this is where we would have to take a look at how the immigration will improve that situation without harming the individual rights and human rights of the people involved. Would that you, would that be agreeable to you? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Actually, uh, for the information of everyone, we are guided by the Department of uh, Justice. Uh, guidelines on departure formalities, uh, which provides the checklist uh, uh, and the uh, guidelines in uh, processing uh, overseas Filipino workers uh, for uh, deployment abroad. So, but Commissioner, that's not, a, that's, a, that's, not, well, that's not operation of vacuum. No? Sometimes the law may be oppressive already, and uh, it is up to the Commissioner to uh, make the recommendations from time to time that uh, this is not working, uh, that we're hurting our people more than we're helping them. Would that be correct, sir? Uh, that's very correct, sir. Actually, uh, the uh, IACAT or the Interagency Committee on Anti-Trafficking, which is chaired by the Department of Justice, is regularly meeting and uh, discussing all of these uh, things. Uh, we know the Bureau of Immigration is not perfect in uh, Processing uh, departing Filipinos, uh, uh, a lot are being prevented from traveling, but uh, the main uh, objective of uh, our immigration officers is to... All this has been done. So now what is it that you want change in the law? That's what I want to know. Because anybody can draft a law without the vision that we talked about, that we should be able to do all the things that we talked about just now, and then some and make sure that uh, we come out with a more or less near perfect law that would be make everybody happy except the drug pushers, except the people who are trying to get in, and make sure that it's faster. And that can be done by better salaries, uh, better law enforcement, uh, better use of the digitalization and science. Is that correct? Uh, very correct, sir. Uh, those are the things that uh, we would like to propose in the new immigration law. That's correct. So. More or less, we have simplified the issue. Would that be correct? Uh, yes, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, very correct, sir. Uh, because I think I think we have a pretty good grasp on what's happening, right? And of course, you've got to get this uh, the laggards out or the rascals out. For example, those who involve themselves in pastillas, right? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this would involve uh, organizational changes and, uh, of course, automation to prevent. Uh, uh, Immigration officers from uh, directly dealing with uh, our passengers, with our uh, transacting clients. In other words, there would be uh, CCTVs, there will be guidelines that would be periodically given to all the immigration officers what to do, what not, not to do. And when they cross the line, they will be severely punished or removed. Is that correct? Very correct, sir, Your Honor. So I think we more or less have the, the lay of the land, right? Uh, unless you want to ask some more. Uh, no more, Your Honor. We subscribe to the, we defer also to the wisdom of the uh, Senate Committee on Justice because uh, we have also studied, sir, uh, for quite a long while the uh, immigration law. And for that matter, for an example, uh, 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 matters like uh, giving visas, uh, 
uh, there is room for corruption there, right? Uh, for example, people are delayed getting uh, uh, their, their visas renewed, especially if they're in business. That is something we have to address as well, right? Uh, we should, we should, uh, Your Honor. That's why uh, a reorganization and uh, streamlining of processes and procedures is part of the uh, proposed immigration law, Your Honor. Or for that matter, for example, being liberal and giving permanent resident visas to people who are not qualified. Yes, sir. Uh, this would also involve the other agencies uh, who are processing the uh, visas, uh, such as the retiring visa, the investor's visa. Retirement and, uh, visas are fine. That's part of tourism. That's part of other agencies, right? Uh, but. Uh, uh, at times, there are people who take advantage of uh, influence uh, to get permanent resident visas as well, right? Uh, that's very correct, Your Honor. In other words, in a perfect world, there's no room for any president or any senator or congressman to ask for a resident visa for somebody who's obviously not qualified. Yes, sir. All right. And we want to, in other words, the, the, the key word is professionalize and standardize for the benefit of the common good of this country. Uh, the immigration policies. Very correct, sir. And sometimes when there are too many cooks, they spoil the broth. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, so we agree more or less on the guidelines on the basic uh, parameters. Uh, would that be correct? Uh, very correct, Your Honor. All right. Now let's proceed. Uh, which one? Uh, how do you intend to professionalize the Bureau of Immigration? Uh, and you're saying. You want the grant of appointing and disciplining authority to the commissioner? Uh, are these the things that you want to do so we can put it already in the law? Ilagay nyo na yan, streamline nyo na para sa natin yung amend. Ano portion ng law ang yung amend natin para mabilis tayo? Would that be a good uh, step in the right direction? Uh, very correct, sir. Uh, this would give also, uh, this would also address the anti-corruption uh, uh, concern of the Bureau uh, such that uh, it would not take long for uh, corrective actions to be taken against erring uh, members of the uh, agency of the bureau because uh, having come from the armed service i think sir uh, the best antidote to uh, illegal activities is the certainty and timeliness of uh, punishment so uh, it must be know that there must be swift action and yes, there sir. must be no favoritism and that uh, the law will be applied and the act will fall where it must fall. Yes, sir. Uh, very correct, sir. All right. So let's now go to your objectives. Number one, I'm sorry if I'm going uh, if you're going to make a presentation, I would appreciate it if you make the presentation fast. But if you think you're going to start already by going out and saying, all right, we want to professionalize the Bureau of Immigration, this is the way. Can you tell us now <laughs> that is possible or do you still want to make your presentation? Can we go over the presentation, sir? Presentation, sir. All right, sir. Uh, I just want to save time. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, may I ask uh, Attorney Arvin Santos, the Chief of the Legal Division, to please proceed. Uh, don't go over any more about the on the uh, mission vision. Let's proceed to the salient points. Yes. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chairman, uh, Commissioner Morente, and. Uh, Dear colleagues, uh, just to go over the objectives briefly, number one, we uh, desire to professionalize the Bureau of Immigration. Number two, uh, to grant appointing and disciplining authority to the commissioner. Number three, expand organizational structure for better access to immigration services and to address issues on terrorism and trafficking of persons. Number four, upgrade existing positions of officers and administrative staff to adequately meet the country's rapidly increasing immigration services. Number five, upgrade employees' compensation and benefits to address the apparent disparity between the basic pay of BI employees and employees of agencies performing comparable functions. Number six, Enhance trainings and capacity building activities to improve border control expertise of immigration officers. And number seven, retention and use of income for modernization programs and projects and to augment its operational expenses. Next slide. Uh, 
in our position paper, Honorable Chairman, we support the House Bill 8850, which excuse has. Me, excuse uh, me. Yes. Let's go back to this slide again. Uh, one to one to seven. Go ahead, like this. One to seven. There, Mr. Chairman. What do you mean, expand organizational structure for better access to immigration services? Um, we in in House Bill eighty eight fifty, um, we there is the provision for creation of um, several divisions with our, which are new, Mr. Chairman. These divisions are. Immigration Law Enforcement Division, Planning and Research Division, and Human Resource Management and Development. So there are, will be three okay, new divisions. All uh, personnel who can come in and improve your services. Is that what you mean? Yes, Chairman. It doesn't say that. Uh, in other words, you need more professionals to address all these other problems that have come into the woodwork, right? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, yes, uh, say it directly because nakakalito din siya sabi niya can you can you collect that at first and concern uh uh for uh, we upgrade existing positions of officers and administrative staff to adequately meet the country's rapidly increasing immigration services what do you mean by upgrade existing positions um the increase of their salary grades basically chairman <laughs> but you just say we want to increase so that we can retain them yes is that what you mean uh it's not the position yes sir you want, you, you want to retain them you want to make sure that they have money right yes sir yes sir um Marante is raising his hand chairman. Being simplistic. because these are general terms you're throwing out and sometimes it uh it destroys the focus upgrade existing positions of officers when you upgrade existing positions you make sure that somebody gets promoted and he has more uh, yes, more duties to do uh, to adequately meet the uh, country's rapidly increasing. You can do that even right now. But what you really mean is to increase salaries, right? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the commissioner is raising his hand. I can see that, but I'm asking you a question. Yes, um, aside from the salary, Mr. Chairman, is of course the uh, position. It would raise also their classification or items. That would also um, further the professionalization. A salary increase. When you change the position and classification, that triggers a salary increase. So we're talking about the same thing. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it would also like uh, we'd also like to mean that uh, we have to increase the number of immigration personnel uh, in all the different offices uh, of the bureau because of, as of the present we are heavy on uh, contractual employees. And uh, these people do not have- Why don't you say that, Jim, Jimmy? Why don't you say that? You know, expand organizational structure. That means you're putting in more people instead of casuals, you want them to be professional, right? Uh, yes, sir. You know, ilagay nyo, ilagay nyo na ng open parenthesis yan. Uh, staff, ilagay mo ibig sabihin nila doon. You expand organizational structure means you want to expand uh, more people uh, because uh, they're overwhelmed. Right? Yes, sir. Plus the accountability portion of uh, contractual employees uh, is not uh, beneficial to the Bureau. Uh, okay, we need more. You upgrade existing positions to increase salaries, right? So you can get better people, right? Yes, sir. Uh, oh, you're, you're beating behind the bushes. We'll have it uh, amended, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Milky, um, uh, are you listening, staff? We are also recording, sir. So. Can you see it already? The way I asked the question, all right? Can you see the presentation there on your side? I need you to answer fast. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, good. All right, let's go on. Let's go on. I'm sorry for you. I just want to be sure I'm clear because I cannot make a good law unless I'm clear. So go ahead, number five. Oh, parayo na naman yan. Upgrade employees' compensation and benefits to address the apparent disparity within the basic pay of BI employees and employees of agencies perform. That is really what you call uh, 
civil minimums. Bakit siya meron? Ako wala. Di ba yun yan? Bakit siya ibang department meron? Kami wala. In other words, you want to level the playing field. Right? Am I correct? Correct, yes, sir. sir. I want to be able, when I present this to the Senate, as a plenary, I want to be able to tell it the way it is. Hindi mag pa sila. All right? Or is that too frank for you? Shall we submit to the uh, wisdom of the chairman? So number five should be level the playing field so that they can be level with other similar agencies. The immigration department is a very important function and we should provide them with the wherewithal. As Churchill said, give me the tools and I will finish the job. Correct? I might stop you better answer. I don't want to wait or answer. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Okay, good. Six. Go ahead. Number six. Num number six, enhanced trainings and capacity building activities to improve border control expertise of immigration officers. So what does that mean? You want to train more and you're you're not training right now? You don't have any training fund? Uh, limited, Chairman. You do the have a training, training fund, fund is limited. Right? Do you have a proposal? Yes. What kind of training you're going to have? Uh, Capacity building activities to improve border control expertise of immigration officers. The real problem there is we have more airports and more seaports now. And you want to give them capacity, right? Iba yung capacity sa Manila, iba yung capacity sa provincia, correct? Correct, Chairman. Oh. Staff, did you get what I said? They said correct, huh? Uh, uh, you can, you can, pwede nyo akong barahin, Jimmy. I don't have the franchise on intelligence, but I'm just trying to decipher what you're trying to say. Kasi nagugulaan ako sa law, eh. Okay? Am I helping? Are my suggestions helpful to you guys? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Seven, retention and use of income. Oh, lachan hinihingi yan. Dadaan tayo sa budget dyan, sa finance. I approve of that. I support that. Why should we be waiting like a beggars when we are earning the money? You earn the money, you use it. So long as you don't uh, splurge it into uh, unnecessary expenditures. You got that stuff? All right, let's go on. Next slide, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, following slides are the salient provisions of House Bill 8850, which supports the objective of the Bureau of Immigration. Uh, number one, on Section 11, appointment, promotion, reassignment, and disciplinary authority of the commissioner. Letter A, appointment, promotion, and reassignment. Uh, promotions and appointments to positions of division chiefs and above shall be made by the Secretary of Justice upon the recommendation of the Commissioner. Uh, exercise control and supervision over the officers of the Bureau, including the power to appoint, promote, and reassign personnel subject to civil service laws, rules, and regulations. Question. Who is going to appoint? The Secretary of Justice or the Commissioner of Immigration? For positions, uh, division chiefs and above, um, we it, it will be the Secretary of Justice, but for lower positions, it will be the Commissioner of Immigration. Why? Well, you don't have, uh, why don't you just say uh, the, the, the Commission will appoint subject eventually to the approval or uh, negation by the Secretary of Justice? Para mabilis. Um, I think this is to... Um, uh, make a delineation, Mr. Chairman, because uh, currently all appointments uh, of the employees of the Bureau of Immigration are done by the Secretary of Justice upon the recommendation of the Commissioner. Don't you think there is a lot? Do you think there is a uh, that slows down the process? How long is the average time before the Secretary of Justice appoints your recommendations, Commissioner Morente? Uh... I wouldn't, um, I would venture to uh, that it's being approved uh, in a month's time, Your Honor, but uh, I would just like to add that uh, there is the uh, provision on power to hire and fire. Uh, 
which would also lead to the disciplinary authority of the commissioner. If he is not the appointing authority, he cannot uh, make the disciplinary actions on... You're answering me by way of the back door. Answer my question. Are you in favor that the commissioner can hire and fire and can make recommendations and the Secretary of Justice will approve the recommendation within a certain amount of time so, so that the uh, bureaucracy is not throttled? Uh, yes, sir. I subscribe to the... Uh... Uh, let's go all out. Let's go yes, all sir. Out. Thank you, sir. I, 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 I was a local government official and I'm a, basically a, an executive official, not really uh, made for legislation, but I, I try to do my best. But I think what is practical, the reason why this country is slow, is that I mean, you have to jump through hoops to every bureaucracy. Do you agree? Uh, I agree uh, to your uh, to the chairman. Any proposed amendments that I'm saying, uh, Attorney Luigi? Well, yes, sir. You better be taking it down. Don't be looking as if you, you're looking at a ghost. Because I'm going to get back to you. All right. Exercise control and supervision over the officers of the Bureau, including the power to appoint, promote, and reassign personnel subject to civil service laws, rules, and regulations. There is a rule of law. You cannot just transfer. So, so long as you follow the rule of law, you should be able to give a free hand in running the commission, right? Yes, sir. And we should now just add the colatilla, but if you go rogue, the Department of Justice has the right to remove you. Uh, correct, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. All right. Oh, next, please. Oh, tignan, ang dami pang kuha, no? Bakit anong pakiram na Secretary of Justice? Araw-araw nakikita nyo kung anong ginagawa. Although the Secretary of Justice can call your attention kung meron kalokohan na ginagawa. Diba? Na hindi mo hindi mo inaasa. Basta automatically when you when you fire, uh it it is uh, immediately executory but can be reversed by the Department of Justice upon appeal or review. Would that be correct? Very correct, sir. Oh, did you get that attorney catalog? Oh, he got it. Okay, good. Padali lang ako. Just tell me how to make it work. Powers and functions headed by a director. Give me an example of a director. director uh, sir, this has been uh, uh, agreed upon that we should just be headed by a division chief, which is the present organizational setup of the Bureau of Immigration. Can you just show me the present setup of the division of the organization quickly? All right, who are the directors there? Administrative Division, Legal Division, Intelligence Division, Alien Registration, Finance, Information, Immigration Operations, and now you have added Human Resource Management and Planning and Research Division, Immigration Law Enforcement. So if you want to fire somebody, uh, Commissioner Morente, who would be adjudicating whether he should be fired and make that recommendation? Would be the uh, proposed internal affairs, Your Honor. I don't see internal affairs here. Uh, this is the, uh, the internal affairs would be under the Office of the Commissioner. I'm sorry, it was not uh, uh, included, sir. Sorry. Under the Office of the Commissioner, internal affairs? Uh, yes, sir. Are you sure? Don't you want to make it uh, on the Board of Special Inquiry for, mga, for deportation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, for deportation cases. Uh, cases. How about uh, internal affairs is based on intelligence, right? Uh, actually, sir, it's investigation. So we don't have an investigation division. So, we have an internal affairs division, right? Uh, yes, sir. Make it independent para hindi magagalaw ng future commissioner of immigration. It is a parang the ombudsman. Yes, sir. Uh, it could just be supported by the uh, office of the commissioner in funding, but uh, it will not be under the uh, uh, dictate of the commissioner. Here. Obviously, all that will be supported. They will have a budget to submit, right? Yes, sir. Magdali kayo dyan, internal affairs. Saan niya lalagay?
Uh, where would you put it? You're a military man. You should know where to put it. Legal, uh, we could have it under the legal division, Your Honor. The European, why don't you put it under the commissioner? Hindi under the commissioner, pero may sidebar, may board doon na nakalagay uh, internal affairs. Broken line, yes, sir. Uh, that would be uh, similar to what is uh, in the PNP. Oh, pero ayoko yung magkabaro, ah, ayusin eh. Kailangan may independence sa commissioner. Yes, sir. To be an independent uh, body. And dapat nakalagay na lang doon sa Conera, independent, no? Commissioner yes, can sir. intervene. Whatever they recommend, then the commissioner will only make a decision, right? Right, sir. I'm correct, sir. Oh, sige. Uh, take note, guys. Okay, let's go back. Parts and functions held by the director. Pakilagay nga kung sino yung kuha niyan. Uh, creation of the internal affairs. Ito na yan? Section 14 and 15. Lagyan niyo lang dyan. Independent of the commissioner can recommend to the commissioner. Conduct inspection and audit over personnel and units of the bureau. Receive administrative complaints and doors to the Secretary of Justice. Oh, bakit na naman sa Department of Justice ay sa commission yan eh? Dapat automatically, pag may tinanggal kayo tungkol dyan, doon lang papasok ang Secretary of Justice. Yes, sir. Uh, sort of an appellate uh, body, sir. Uh, Pwede ba yan? If, uh, if the, the hiring would be uh, given to the uh, commissioner, then it could be it could fire and yeah, the organization complaints endorsed to the Secretary of Justice. So the Secretary of Justice gets a complaint. So he refers it to whom? To the Bureau of Commission, the Commissioner, or to the Internal Affairs? Uh, internal, the affairs internal Affairs should be under the Department of Justice. I'm looking at uh, the uh, similarity of this uh, organizational chart to where I came from, Your Honor, the BNP, where uh, the internal affairs is uh, under the department, uh, the uh, NAPOLCOM. There is the, uh, uh, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, but we do not have that organization in the Department of Justice, Your Honor. In charge of internal affairs for any wrongdoing involved with the Bureau of Immigration. That way, there is another layer separated. Para takot sila. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Uh, Again, not the Secretary of Justice, Sam. Because he has the oversight on you guys. Eh? So, anybody yes, complains about the Bureau of Immigration, refer it to the Secretary of Justice, and the Secretary of Justice has to act on it right away and can order you to conduct the investigation in an impartial manner. And the report should be submitted to the Department of Justice. All right? It's okay, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, staff? Okay, yes, they sir. got it. They got it. All right, okay. Please, uh, please pay attention. Huh? File appropriate criminal cases against BI personnel before the court or the... Can you ban a file or Secretary of Justice? Hindi na kayo yan. Dapat Secretary of Justice yan. Nasayang pa yung trabaho nyo. In other words, the evidence will be compiled by the legal division and the filing of the cases will be by the Secretary of Justice. Will be that okay? I'm waiting for your answer, a penny for your thoughts. Um, you can justify it, whatever you want to say. Kasi kung meron pa kayang abogado, kung papayal kayang criminal cases, lalabas pa sa usgado, di ba babawasan na naman yung trabaho niyo? 
Ang Department of Justice, they have all the lawyers, they have the state prosecutors, right? Ano, ibabaksak rin sa kanila yan sa appeal eh. Uh, yes, Chairman. I think that is a good suggestion. Thank you. I hope I'm I'm alright. No, I don't 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 say pinilit ko kayo. I'm just saying para independent kayo. Ah, huh? uh, what does the staff say? Okay, ba yan? Oh, they agree. So the Department of Justice will file the cases. All right, based on the preparations made by the Internal Affairs or by the Legal Division or by the Commissioner. You got that, guys? The commissioner can recommend cases to be filed by the Department of Justice on the recommendation of the legal division and by the Internal Affairs as uh, under the Secretary of Justice. Okay? Hey, guys, are you listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it's in the Would you please speak? Would you please speak? All right. So, this uh, section, Your Honor, would be. Uh, not included anymore in the uh, new immigration law if we transfer the internal affairs to the Department of Justice. Which one? Not... By the assistance of the Office of the Ombudsman? No, sir. Uh, the Section 14 and 15, Creation of Internal Affairs, if this would be placed okay. under the Department of Justice, then I think this would not have to be included. Another another creation of the Internal Affairs Service under the Department of Justice for, for, for immigration. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Diba? Yes, sir. We're doing a law for all time. <clears throat> all right? Unless they say no. They say no, uh, babalik tayo dyan. Maglalagay tayo ng internal affairs service. So keep it there. Muna, uh, I will, uh, we will talk to the Department of Justice. Is anybody there from DOJ? John P. John P. Good, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for uh, recognizing. Uh, Paolo Salvahan. Salvahan mo itong pinag-uusapan natin. Okay ba sa inyo yan? Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good and morning. To the, other uh, to the other illustrious members of this honorable committee. Uh, mind the nice piece. Just go direct to the point. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we recognize the discussions uh, this morning. However, Mr. Chairman, the sections 14 and 15 uh, under House Bill 8, 850 is uh, based on the uh, premise that the Secretary of Justice and the Commissioner has shared uh, appointing authority and promotional authority, hence that the the distinction in the in the disciplinary authority. If we take away the uh, appointing authority of the Secretary of Justice and and uh, but give him the Internal Affairs Service, then that might somehow be in conflict with the. Uh, in a way, Mr. Chairman, that would be in conflict with the uh, right of the Secretary of Justice to discipline the employees because he does not have the appointing authority, Mr. Chair. No, it's just the oversight over uh, one. Well, this is a this is a, 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 a practically a branch. Anibang tao dyan? Uh, an attached agency? Uh, Mr. Chairman, based on the existing law, the DOJ still has control and supervision over the uh, based on the proposed legislation, we're the not going with that, uh, uh, Attorney John P. Salvan. Yes. Yeah. All I'm saying is, para mabilis, uh, he still has, or if you like, he can still appoint the Secretary of Justice, and can appoint the Commissioner. By the way, the Commissioner is appointed by the President, di ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. So what and are we talking uh, for, about? The President appoints uh, all the officers there. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the delineation. I think the purpose of the delineation when the uh, Secretary of Just Justice was given the authority to appoint the division chiefs, uh, uh, that is the concept or that was the discussion before in the House on the shared uh, responsibility or the shared authority of the Commissioner and the Secretary, Mr. Chair. When you so, share, it creates delay. Mm -hmm. Don't you think so? Mag-aaway pa yan, pero kung malino na, the Commissioner of Immigration, siyang in charge, when I was Secretary of Tourism, sabi ko kay President Arroyo, ako mag a -appoint. Kung may gusto kang appoint, padaanin mo sa akin para hindi tayo mag a para mabilis. Uh, I think the issue, Mr. Chairman, is if we place the Internal Affairs Service under the Department of Justice and the Secretary does not have any appointing authority, 
then his disciplinary authority will also be uh, removed, necessarily removed. Why? The Secretary of Justice is uh, uh, has a supervision over the Department of Justice. And if the internal affairs is there, then you are removing the Makakabaru system and the Secretary of Justice can now investigate whoever is doing wrong in the, Depart in the Bureau of Immigration without the Bureau of Immigration being accused of coddling people. In which case, Mr. Chairman, may we ask, uh, what would be the extent of the authority of the Internal Affairs Service? Will it have the authority to remove or fire those found? No, you just uh, investigate and recommend to the, to the Secretary of Justice who will be removed. Internal Affairs just investigate. Anywhere in the world, they yes. just investigate. Whether they're police yes. internal affairs or whether whatever internal affairs they are, they are there as the watchdog. Isn't that correct, Commissioner Mirante? Uh, correct, Mr. Chairman, sir. If they hear somebody taking a bribe, na papastillas, they will investigate. Then they submit it to the Department of Justice, right? Yes, Mr. Chair. In fact, that's the current practice right now. It's the Department of Justice which does the investigation over the BI personnel, Mr. Chair. Yeah, kung ang internal affairs and dyan dyan, may nakomplain sa Secretary of Justice, ang tao dito natin sa Pilipinas, naku ba, magkukomplain kayo, mga bata ng commissioner yan eh. Nagtatakbo na ako sa Secretary of Justice, Sigurado ako, correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Imagine you're in his place. You're in the place of somebody who has been wrong. Tatakbo sa condition of immigration. That reduces the trust of the people. Sino mang kilala mo dyan kaagad ang pag-uusapan? Sino kilala mo sa commissioner? Right? Yes, Mr. Chair. You can fault my, my logic, but if you go... Any complaint against the uh, Commission of Immigration, hindi na siya ng awa, the Internal Affairs, pinag-investigate ang Secretary of Justice, that gives more power to the Secretary of Justice to make sure that he has the reins, the reins on, on the Immigration Department. They will, they will go the straight line. If they, he finds that mayroong gulo, mayroong sumbo, may pastillas, investigate niya, and then they recommend ka agad Secretary of Justice, wala na, tepok na yun, right? Yes, Mr. Chair. May I be allowed to further explain the point, our point, Mr. Oh, Chair? Oh, you don't have to ask my permission. I mean, I'm easy. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, we, we do not have any issue if the Internal Affairs Service would be placed under the Department of Justice. Fine. However, the recommendation of the Internal Affairs Service on, the, for example, if an employee or BI personnel is found guilty, and, and then it will be submitted to the Secretary of Justice, but the appointing authority of the Secretary of Justice has already been removed under the law. Uh, what will now be the authority of the Secretary of Justice to impose that penalty or to implement the penalty recommendation? The law. This law says he can remove them. In that case, Mr. Chairman, pro provided it is, it is expressly uh, written and uh, stated in the law, then we would not have, uh, we believe that we would not have any issue on we that. We even issue. let you draft the law. The language of the law. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Diba? Well, let's cut to the chase. Why don't you call Secretary Ibarra? Maganda yung nakakompartmentalize eh. Unless there is, unless you see that there is a, a flaw in the law that we're going to make. As far as I know, the Secretary of Justice has jurisdiction over the Commission on Immigration. So long as they're doing their job, no problem. But if there is shenanigans, the Secretary of Justice, even without this law, can go after the Bureau of Immigration. Is that correct? Based on the power of control and supervision, yes, Mr. Chair. Hey, Department of Justice and all the other. Mayor, good morning. Uh, just, just a quick one, partner. Uh, I'm, do, I'm doing the immigration law. No? Okay, ito, ito, para matapos ka agad tayo. Hahabulin ko ito, eh. ilang araw na lang tayo. Ang sinasabi nila, meron tayong internal affairs sa Commission on Immigration. Yung internal affairs, kung naandun sa loob ng immigration, ang suspicion, trust, 
uh, magkakabaro, mahirap pumunta dyan. Eh, sila-sila ang magdidesisyon. So, ang sabi ko, ilagay ko yung internal affairs sa Secretary of Justice. So, any, uh, so the Secretary of Justice, pag may narinig siya, may pasillas, o internal affairs, Secretary of Justice, kung in charge na sa uh, Department, sa Bureau ng uh, Immigration, ito so, nang bumali dyan, tapos pasok mo sa akin ng recommendation, you remove, you remove. Is that okay? been overruled. <laughs> All right, Doming. Uh, si Mr. P. John P. Mr. Chair. John P. Yes, Mr. Chair. Ano pa ano mo? John P. <laughs> John Paulo Salbala. Okay, agreed. Yes, Mr. Chair, agreed. Okay, grab mo na ka. kami. You can you can confirm it with him. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, mabilis tayo. Sige, mabilis natin. Okay, next. Oh, alisin nyo na yan. Provide assistance to the Office of the Ombudsman. We're not going to remove the Ombudsman's authority over you. Okay, yan? Yeah? Okay, sir? Jimmy? So, yung file appropriate criminal... Yes, sir. We'll, uh, okay, sir. We'll go to the Internal Affairs. We'll go to the Secretary of Justice. Any shenanigans in the Commission will be handled by the Secretary of Justice. Yes, sir. Wala na internal affairs. Internal affairs is now assigned to the Secretary of Justice. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, baka mag-apply na si Mr. P. Yes, uh, internal affairs. All right, go ahead, uh, sir. Section 2437, creation of new divisions and other operating offices of the Bureau. Okay ako dyan, Immigration Law Enforcement Division. Ano ibig sabihin niyan, Jimmy? Maglalagay ka ng mga tao mo sa labas. At saka sa loob, di ba? Yes, sir. Uh, this will be the operational uh, unit, sir, of the Bureau of Immigration. Uh, sa ngayon kasi, uh, it's the intelligence officers who also conduct the arrest of uh, foreign nationals. Uh, I envision that the intelligence and the law enforcement the actual units uh, conducting the arrest would be different para hindi naman sir mabuburn out yung identity ng mga intelligence officers natin. Ang problema mo dyan, ang ng PNP, sabihin nila, police na naman yan. Pero okay sa akin yan. Immigration law enforcement, sa Amerika, meron silang in, in, in immigration law enforcement. Nakikita ko, may mga kaibigan ko, kababayan ko, immigration law sila, may enforcement. Yan ang gusto mo mangyari, di ba? Yes, sir. Uh, similar to that, sir. Na pa. Utusan mo doon sa Davao, meron doon loko. Diba? Yes, sir. Uh, with the coordination, of course, no? Ano yung planning and research division? <clears throat> uh, this is a new division actually created already, sir. Uh, this was given to us by uh, the Department of Budget and Management. Uh, okay. in charge... Ila ilagay nyo na lang kung ano sasabihin yan. Anong gagawin? Ano, ano yan? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there are some descriptions in the... Ano yan? Modernization? Uh, Yung mga araw-araw, mga modernization, dapat may budget kayo yes, ng for modernization. Yes, sir. Uh, they will be in charge also on the uh, review of uh, uh, technologies that uh, may okay. be... Isa natin ito, ahabor natin ito. Okay na, gawin nyo na yan. Gawin nyo na. Pakita nyo lang sa akin yung specifics, ha? Kagad. Yes. This afternoon, yung mga bata mo, patsulat na yan. Alright? Hello? Yes, sir. Human yes, Resource sir. Management and Development Review, ayan yung nag-re-recruit. Yes, sir. Uh, recruitment, uh, moral and welfare. Uh, uh, right. Uh, okay, regional yes, offices created by the board. How many regional offices are you going to create? You have to uh, keep with the times. How many ports do you have now? 
Can you submit to me the number of airports and seaports where the immigration uh, is uh, working and all the other uh, areas where you're working? Yes, sir. Uh, we will do, sir. Uh, right after this, sir. Today, yeah, today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Internet. Yes, sir. Internet. Pwede nyo nang dalay niyan. Yes, sir. Fiber. Kukopiay na lang namin dito. Yung mga maps. Yes, sir. According to political, so that you'll have 17 regions. Ano kalagay lahat siya? Meron kayo? Ganun ba? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, actually, sir, uh, ang uh, criteria namin is uh, on areas uh, with high density of foreign nationals, sir. Sa ngayon. Right. Siyempre, maglalagay kayo ng immigration officers doon sa mga tawi-tawi sa Sulu. We have that. Uh, uh, no, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, even border crossing stations we have. Sir. Right, right. Uh, in coordination with Coast Guard and everybody else, right? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Other law enforcement agencies. Oh, sige. Okay, tayo dyan. Are you happy, Jimmy? Are we making progress? Uh, we are, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. District and field offices. Tama yan. Sa provision na yan, right? Uh, yes, sir. Correct, sir. Ingatan nyo lang. Baka tirahin kayo ng budget sa sobrang personnel, ha? Pero dapat kung anong kailangan, basta kikita. Bigyan nyo ng pagkakataon na kikita ang gobyerno at hindi mababawasan yung economic damage. Malaking baga, mababawasan yung economic damage. Yes, sir. Uh, on collections, we are a, also a contributor to the offers of government. Uh, the highest we had was 8 million a year. 8 million. Oh, you give it to me. Pero pag uh, nag, uh, pro, nag uh, labas tayo bukas, I am trying to do this. Ano bang araw bukas? Thursday. Thursday. Abang nangyabol ka pa bukas kung magawa ito. <laughs> Uh, we love it submitted, sir. The uh, profile Monday. on our collections. <coughs> sa Monday, at least. Uh, at least sa Monday, ma, ma sponsor ko ito, na-approve, papapirma ko yung committee report, and then uh, buli natin on second. Pa-certify mo na lang sa Presidente. Uh, pag na-certify niya, on third, uh, on, on Wednesday next week, approve na yan by, uh, by Camera Conference Committee. Kausapin mo lang yung mga lower house. Yes, sir. Uh, Kaya na, pinaplano natin. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. To upgrade employees' compensation and benefits to address the apparent disparity between the basic pay of BI and employees of agency performing. Oh, meron ba kayong matrix na? Uh, we, we have, sir. Uh, Ayan. Ay, wala kayong matrix. Na, walang, walang comparative sa Justice Department or sa police or sa saan yan. We, we have, sir, uh, on file. Uh, these were used in the discussions with uh, the DBM and uh, the other concerned agencies. Paayaw ang DBM dahil balita ko, sabi nila. Diyan ba ang DBM? Diyan ba ang DBM? Ang angal ang DBM. Maria Lourdes, ah, ganun. Ang angal yes. ng DBM ay yung two, yung uh, mataas masyado yung EA. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, speak up. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, we do not agree with uh, yung mga upgrading po ng possession students. Can you speak a little louder, please? Yeah. We do not ag uh, agree support the upgrading of possessions po. Kasi this would distort the salary standardization law. And then sa admin possessions po kasi it should be common to all agencies. They are performing po kasi the same functions. Uh, and also... On the EA po, uh, dun sa law kasi, dun sa proposed bill po, masyado pong mataas. We have standards for this po. Malu, Malu, I, cannot hardly, I can hardly hear you. But I ask I, again, as I always ask the budget, higyan nyo ang actual situation, ha? You do not agree. First, what, where do you not agree? Sir, there are several portions of the bill that we suggest to delete. You're fading as you speak. There are several portions, portions that? Uh, the DBM has reservations, Your Honor. For example? Um, can I, can, sir, there are 16 items on organization, position, classification, and compensation. Not all of these items, we, uh, we support the others, the others we can have reservations, if I may be allowed. Go ahead, show it to me. Uh, sir, I don't have a PowerPoint presentation. I'll just read it very briefly, if I may. But you have the you have the you have the PowerPoint of uh, immigration. Maybe you can point that out. Kusasa na tagilid. 
Sir, wala po kaming PowerPoint ng immigration. Ayun na nasa board? Ah, sir, ito po. Um, sir, this is consistent with uh, these are existing position titles po. Um, all right, all right. Walu, I am not going yeah. to force you because my, I, I will not make a, a good decision. Can you prepare kung saan kayo in the day nag agree Yes, sir. We have a position paper which we will submit. Hindi kayo nag agree dito. Yes, sir. On the so the upgrading of the salary grade allocation, the proposed yes, provisions sir. under Section 28, 20, yes, sir, 21, honor. 33, 35, 37, 39, and yes. 31, and 6 of 1649, Senator will distort the existing standards for professional and sub existing in the national government. Why will it distort? You yes, sir. Have one size fits all. Matagal lang akong galit dyan eh. You cannot have one size fits all. For example, if they're contributing eight billion, why will you not let them get the amounts that they require para to have a more efficient and make more than eight billion a year? Your Honor, because yung like yung NT level immigration officer S three eleven, we base it yung salary grade allocation po. We base it on the duties and responsibilities. You're you're uh, interesting you. Uh, Kung hado mabagal ang bosses mo, mababaw. Ina. <laughs> I think I'm having uh, internet problems. So it's you're based. Not, you're not. Just go nearer the microphone. Yeah. It's based on the uh, the duties and responsibilities, the qualification requirements, and there's and the degree of responsibility. So you immigration officer one for this are entry level position. So fresh graduates po sila. So you need to define yung mga yon. Pero kung essential yon, technical yung kinukuha nila. Kailangan nila, that is how you start these people from going up the ladder of professionalism uh, and career path within the department based on their technical expertise, di ba? Sir, so, so we can recognize... The best. Sir, we actually recognize it already when we had the salary grade allocation. Tapos especially po for the like the IT officer, information technology officer positions. These are common positions across all agencies. So what makes the IT one different sa BI po? So dapat po, pantay-pantay lang po. All right, okay. I, I will not intervene there. The commissioner, can you talk with the budget para makabuha kayo ng uh, solution dyan? Uh, yes, sir. Actually, sir, uh, we have we had discussions already in the House of Representatives regarding this, and uh, as I understand, uh, they were amenable to this. That's why the bill was passed. But uh, we'll we'll uh, reach out again, sir, for uh, discussion to the uh, DBM on this. You know, the trouble with DBM is it tries to be the Congress. Eh? We're the ones that hold the purse strings of the government. We're the power of the purse. Uh, kailangan, based on your recommendations, pakikinggan namin kayo. Pero ang titignan naman namin is the whole nine yards. Makakabuti ba ito kung bibigyan natin ito? Eh, standardization, one size fits all. It's not working. It's not working. You get, you know, right now, even sa judges, malalaki ang sweldo ng mga abogado, sa mga judges, sa mga justices, malalaki na. Wala nang gusto mag-abogado ngayon. Gusto judge ka agad, naka justice, kaya ang daming, ang daming incompetent rin. Because wala kailangan ang sordo. Which is an argument against what I'm saying also, na hindi porque kailangan asa mo yung sordo, makukuha mo yung magaling. Kaya kailangan talaga magaling yung kukunin ninyo. Uh, that's, uh, Your Honor, that's actually the reason why we cannot get the best of the best because uh, the take-home pay of an immigration officer one entry level is minus the deductions is 15,000. They cannot even use this to live in Metro Manila uh, to survive. Uh, okay, so sure, no, 15,000? It's 19,000 ang entry level, sir, namin, less the deductions, BIR and all the rest of the deductions. And take-home, ho, kung walang mga loans, around 15,000. So, uh, you know, ang dilemma namin, uh, that's why we have requested for the augmentation pay uh, from, the, uh, from the Office of the President, Your Honor. 
Well, DBM? Yes, um, Your Honor, ang SG-11 po, by this year po, they will be receiving 25,000 na po. 25,439. So, yan yeah. po yung end, yung immigration. 25,000 na this year? Opo. Oh, 25,439 to be exact. Will that be okay? Pwede na siguro yan. That's SG-11 po, Immigration Officer 1. Oh, what do you say, uh, Jimmy? We will try to discuss with the uh, BPM, sir. Well, we don't have much time, so please uh, discuss it. This is an important law. Um, we will subscribe to the uh, recommendation of the uh, uh, committee, sir. And uh, anyway, there will still be discussions in the uh, by do camera. This afternoon while we're in session. But, uh, then you can call me, and then I can call the session back. I will just suspend it, the hearing back. Para matapos natin to. Uh, yes, sir. We will uh, discuss with the answer. All right. Go ahead. Next, Natalia Jan. Okay, ban DBM Jan. I shift differentials overtime pay. Ano ba yung overtime pay Jan? Pag dumarating yung mga aeroplano sa gabi, ang racket ka ng araw, sinisingil niya pa yung mga yung mga Yung mga aeroplano, nakakaya yun. So, dapat talaga may bayad sila. Has DBM agreed to that? Yes, sir. We agree po dun sa payment ng night shift differentials and overtime pay. Pinulak ko na yan eh. Oh. Opo. As long as it's consistent with... Every time tourism ako, I'm embarrassed every time there's an international session, sila sabi yan. Alright? Basta clarify yung overtime pay. Hindi naman lalampas sa buwan. Okay yan, Jimmy? Uh, okay, sir. No problem. Okay, yeah. uh, let's go. Next. On new visa categories, uh, non-immigrants, religious workers. Please proceed. Uh, Attorney Arvin Santos, please proceed. Uh, thank you, Chairman and Commissioner. Uh, for new visa categories, we have for non-immigrants, religious workers, they are presently included in the prearranged employment visa, but classified as non-commercial. This proposed change seeks to separate the visa category of prearranged employment visa commercial and religious workers, which are non-commercial. Uh, number two, representatives of accredited international organizations and government agencies. They are given to foreign officials and staff of accredited international organizations. Number three, media workers, foreign media personnel or correspondents, duly accredited by the government agency concerned. Yung uh, isa, mga reclusion, di ba? Kasama doon? Yung mga... Uh, yung... Number two. Number two, yes, sir. Oh, sure, yeah. oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, number three. Number three are the media workers. Number four are exchange visitors, uh -huh. foreign nationals entering the Philippines to teach, study, observe, conduct research, or receive training in a specific exchange visitor program, duly approved by the Philippine government. Number five, refugees and stateless persons, presently included in the old law under Section 47B. Number six, bridging visa. It is a temporary visa which allows a foreign national to stay in the Philippines after the expiration of the current visa other than temporary visitor visa and while an application for adjustment of status is being processed. Uh, number seven, startup visa. Visa issued by the DFA pursuant to Section 13, Chapter 3 of RA 11.33.7 otherwise known as the Innovative Startup Act. Uh, number eight, special non-immigrant visa. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, number eight, special non-immigrant visa. And then uh, we have for the immigrants, number one, quota immigrant. This seeks to increase the number of quota immigrants from 50 to 200 per nationality. And it also provides the preference to the allotment. 
Can you give me what do you mean by a quota immigrant? Uh, quota immigrants are uh, given to nationals who are who provide either a special skill or investment to the country. So investment right now under current regulations are the equivalent of they have an investment equivalent to US dollar 50,000. And then for the special skill, as long as the uh, special skill that they have uh, will benefit the Philippines, they can also qualify to be given the quota immigrant category. So this is an immigrant visa that is quite peculiar because it is not based on a tie to the Philippines. Normally, immigrant visas are given because they, are, uh, they have ties to the Philippines, such as being married to a Filipino, being born in the Philippines. But for this, it is their own qualification, which uh, gives them the, the, that is the qualification for their visa, meaning it's either the special skill or the special investment. So they are based on their own qualification. A chef? Uh, it can be, uh, especially if it, the chef is a world-renowned. Oh, okay, okay. Non-quota? Non-quota immigrant. Uh, those are those with special ties to the Philippines, such as a person of Filipino descent, the spouse, parent, children, legitimate siblings of a foreign national who is gainfully employed and holder of a permanent resident status for a period of seven years. So. Previously, uh, only under the current setup, only the children and the spouse are uh, allowed to be uh, to be able to benefit from this. Now, under the proposal, the parent is uh, included. Uh, next is we have the native-born permanent resident. It is a child born to a foreign national. And they are lawful residents of the Philippines. So born here to immigrants or lawful residents. So that will entitle them also to permanent residence. And then next is the native-born non-immigrant or temporary resident. So the uh, opposite of the previously defined native-born permanent resident. So for those that are born here, but the parents are non-immigrants. Um, next. Uh, we, we now go to the retention and use of immigration fees. Mr. Chairman. Uh, under Section 136, the board is hereby authorized to retain and use every year 30% of its collection from immigration fees, fines, and penalties and other income with the following provisions. Letter A, amount retained and used by the board shall not exceed 1 billion 200 million pesos, 1.2 billion every year. Pero dapat may nakalagay ano usage. Uh, next slide. Um, next slide, please. The board shall review every... Uh, Let's go back. The board shall review every three years the maximum allowable retained collections based on the needs of the Bureau subject to the approval of DBM. Any excess in the collections shall accrue to the general fund of the national government. So do you have to have a list of things that you have to do, that you have to modernize, yeah. that you have to buy, right? Yes, uh, Chairman. I think the next slide covers that. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is the usage, sir. Uh, ITF is Immigration Trust Fund is hereby created, sourced from the Bureau's collection and shall be administered by the Board in accordance with existing government auditing rules and regulations and shall be used exclusively as follows. 50% shall be dedicated to the modernization of equipment, facilities, and offices used by employees of the Bureau, including capital outlay for the establishment of new buildings and field offices. Oh. 30% for the payment of employee benefits and 20% for the further professionalization of the employees of the Bureau, including trainings, seminars, and other career advanced programs. 
Okay. Sige. Uh, next. Dapat talaga mayroon tayong ano eh. Dapat tayo may parang federal state 1, federal state 2. Dapat nandun na immigration, nandun na lahat ng mga offices ng gobyerno sa bawat probinsya. Uh, maybe that could also be included in that proposal na magkaroon tayo ng uh, uh, national government buildings in every province na madaling puntahan ng tao. But did you file a bill to that effect? I have already filed a bill in the previous Congress. Hanapin niya lang yung national building. Parang federal state one sa Amerika. Sa New York, mayroon yan. Yes, uh, can you research right away, guys? Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, section 11 uh, P, express lane. Provide an express lane system for the rendition of services performed for individuals and entities upon payment of fees that may be prescribed and deposit in an authorized government depository bank such fees received under a trust fund subject to auditing and accounting rules. 50% shall be apportioned for augmentation of salaries of employees, and 50% shall be remitted to the National Treasury. Ano itong green lane? Mauna dun sa pag-process ng immigration sa airport? Um, uh, aside from that, sir, is the for the transactions in the offices of the Bureau, such as in the main office and other offices. No renewal ng visas? Yes, sir. Renewal, visa conversions, and uh, Ay, visa extensions. Uh, yan, um, it violates predictability of uh, fees, etc. Naniniwala ko, pwede doon sa kwan yung nagmamadali. Wala mahuhuli siya. Dapat meron siyang uh, payment ng extra. Yes, that is the uh, idea, the basic premise, sir. Uh, pero pagka sinabi mo yan, Dapat steady lang tayo. Paalis yes. yung mga alis yung mga gusto mag-renew ng visa dahil natatagalan, binag-bureaucracy ninyo. Yan ang problema. Maraming racket dyan eh. Di ba, Jimmy Morante? Di ba, maraming racket dyan at tatagal yung mga nagpaparenew ng visa for employment? Uh, yes, sir. But we are trying to improve the system and reduce the steps. Yan ang dapat nang ayusin. Yes, sir. We are doing it, sir. Well, clarify nyo kung ano pa paano gagawin yan. Di marinaw yan eh. I don't want it to be carte blanche para it will be criticized by the chambers of commerce and say you're uh, giving us extra, extra, uh, you're fleecing us. All right? Yes, sir. Wow. Okay, so yeah. Next slide. Uh, section 123 to 127 and 129. Increase in administrative fines. Sir, at present, the administrative fine is pegged at only 500 pesos. Uh, our proposed bill increases the fines to a minimum of 50,000 pesos. This is the uh, most basic example is for the fines against the airlines. Whenever they uh, allow a foreigner to board who is not lawfully admissible under our immigration law, uh, we seek a imposition of a fine of a minimum of 50,000 pesos. That's $1,000. How does it compare to other countries? Uh, I believe, sir, that the 1,000 US dollar has been imposed by other air airlines as way back as more than 10 years ago. Oh, so, may uh, adjustment na yan. So, find out. Yes, sir. At saka lang yan, adjustable to current uh, practices. Yes, yeah, so that would be a good uh, addition to the provision. Thank you. You can uh, give me later with something. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I, I, next slide. That's uh, our present. That ends our presentation, Chairman. So happy na kayo, John. Sir, uh, sir, may I go back to the uh, return to the matter of the upgrading of salaries? Um, although we will be discussing also with uh, the DDM, I would re I recall, sir, that uh, during our meetings in the House, uh, DDM, the representative of DDM, uh, upon, of course, uh, instruction from the Secretary, uh, approved the uh, salary grade 13 for Immigration Officer 1, only for immigration officers, Your Honor, kasi yung sinasabi kanina na IT officer, IT is a common uh, position, but 
it's only in immigration that we have immigration officers. So, uh, medyo nagkaroon ng uh, uh, distortion. Agreement na this is a, not a common uh, position. So, pumayag sila po sa salary grade 13, but uh, I would still pray that uh, they would uh, retain the salary grade 13 for immigration officer one. It being unique only in immigration, sir. Ano gusto mo salary grade? Uh, actually, sir, ang pinupost noon as 15, but masyadong mataas. 13, sir, would be uh, good already for immigration officers. Ilaban na natin yan. Ilaban na natin. Because may hirap kumuha ng mga technology uh, uh, qualified people. Eh. Di ba? Information technology officer. Ako, nahihiraban sa request dyan. Eh. So, kano ba sa 13? Tingnan mo. 29,000. O. Oh. Okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Sige na. Ako naman, ito, ito ang mga unhappiness ko. Solve my problem. Yes, sir. Number Take one. Note, sir. I had a med tech from Subic Bay. Silala ko yung pamilya niya. They work hard, they're honest, etc. One day, that that woman, uh, tatawa sa molecular lab ko, nagpunta sa immigration. Meron siyang passport. May visa siya sa Dubai. May visa siya sa uh, uh, sa Thailand. Hinarang. Hindi pinalabas. Now, talihin ko, kung anak ko kaya yung napunta doon, haharangin nyo? Uh, we'll, we'll have it check, sir, uh, so that we could uh, give justice to yung kusino ko yung nahod na Alam ko ang purpose. Ang purpose nyo, huwag siya maging ward of the state kung pupunta sa Dubai, kung papasok siya doon. Yes, sir. But that violates the right to travel. That violates the right to find an occupation. That mm -hmm. violates, hindi na ako yan, inherent right. <clears throat> Somebody tried to look for greener pastures for herself. And if she does that, then she's on her own. Uh, what is your, uh, what is your uh, view on that? In fact, I want that guy punished. Eh. Kinakausap ko. Pinapakausap ko, hindi na nga ako, kausapin mo lang. Sabi mo, sagot ko, babayaran ko ba kung babalik? Yes, sir. Uh, anyway, sir, uh, Attorney Carlos Capulong, the chief of the Port Operations Division ngayon, who is in charge of all the airports, is listening. And, uh, uh, Carlos Capulong, ang pangalan nun ay? Napakayabang eh. Hindi ko nga kinausap eh. Baka magalit lang ako. I'm not yes, going to push my rank. I don't push rank. But I find, eh, matino, may degree. Ha? Nagkatrabaho. Nag-ipon, 63,000 yung ticket. Lilipad. Haharangin mo. That's very arbitrary. I don't care if there is a POA rule on that. Kinausap ko pa si Kapdak. O pwede, payagam mo na. At uh, sagot ko yan. Hindi ba tayo pwedeng maging liberal, babayaran ko ba ako pag bumalik? Oh. Tama ba yan? Kung kailangan bumalik, kung magluluko yan, hindi naman magluluko eh. May pinadala ako doon. Nurse, binisita yung tatay. Gusto na magtrabaho doon. Sabi ko, hindi pwede, bumalik ka dito. Ang pangalan niya, Richard Ferreira. Si Mr. Kalangi. Ayaw po talaga ng Mr. Kalangi. Magpaliwanag nga lang yung Mr. Kalangi na yan na kung bakit siya nagpe-play God. Uh, it's being uh, taken note by uh, Attorney Kapulong, sir. We'll uh, take action. No, kaya nga nakakainis eh. Uh, yun, maswerte yun. Mabuting pamilya yun. Eh kung simple yung tao lang, haapihin na lang natin. Ang tingin ko nga, gusto manghingi. Eh kung ginisiya ko yan, 5.30 in the morning. I don't mind. I wake up for people, they ask for blood, they seek help, marami sa immigration, namingi ng blood sa akin, ginigisan ko, hindi ko kilala, nakuha na yung number ko, tumutulong ako. Pero mabisa-misa naman, bigyan nyo naman ang konting benefit of the doubt yung mga tao, besides that's that clad in stone. That can be challenged in the Supreme Court. Muntik na nga ako mag-privilege switch, kaya lang, pag na, hindi ko na pa, Sabi ko, I will not just uh, 
uh, push the uh, immigration bill. We cannot, cannot be assured that those people are decent. That's very indecent. Ano bang kausapin niya? Sir, sorry. Alam kami, order kami. Okay, sige. Alam ko na ang gagawin ko. Hindi. Ayaw makipag-usap kahit ano. Daming kumausap. Si Kakdak, ayaw kausapin. O paano naman niya? Puro ba kayo mga Diyos dyan? Do you think that is so fair? The person is adequately employed. The father is adequately employed. He's going to go to Bangkok and she happens to have a visa. Ang sabi sa kanya, tanggalin mo yung visa mo sa Dubai. Paano siya yan? That, ako, ako, dyan ako nagagalit eh. Pagka inaapi yung mga tao, kinakaya, galit na galit ako dyan. Hindi porke kaibigan ko, ano, but, you know, maraming ganyan eh. Araw-araw may lalapit sa akin. Mga kamabata ako. Sir, Dick, naubos sa impero ko, 100,000. Inubos itong scam sa banko. Sabi ka pumayag. Oh. I have to lend her my own money. O, wala naman eh. I mean, that's what I'm there for. Hindi naman ako. Hindi naman ako maraming pera. Pero ibig sabihin eh, uh, hindi ko naman madadala kung ano man pera na andyan eh, sa langit o sa whatever I'm going eh. So, hindi tayo mga anak ng mga uh, prinsipe di Judas dyan sa um, immigration. You gotta do that with the heart. I didn't want to call you. Why should I call you for that? That's the job of your people. I want to know who this Karangi is. Uh, we'll do, sir. And uh, let me assure that uh, uh, we will have them, all of our immigration officers, properly supervised. You, you can talk to uh, Kakdak. Ayoko nga makiusap eh. Tingin mo nga yan, Kakdak. Sabi ko, uh, kung matutulong ako, hindi, okay lang. Pero magpaliwanag lang kung bakit. There is no rule, there is no law that justifies that. Do you have a law that says that? Arbitrary? Sabi sabihin, oh, hindi. Alis ka. I may swear do ko. I can provide for myself. Di ba? Kung nakakala nyo tatakas ako sa Dubai, ilagay mo ng benefit of the doubt ni, Ka ni Kalangi na tatakas siya. May kamag-anak pa yun doon. And even assuming that he's not, sinabi ko na, kung di niya makakayanan, ibabalik ko yan. concern I have is uh, may alam ko maraming nakuha ang pera yung mga yan pati Yung Secretary of Justice, hindi ko nalang sinama yun dahil kulang ang ebidensya ko. Alam ko talaga sinake down. Bino mo naman, di ba kayo napahiya sa immigration? Gusto nyo gagawin kong issue sa kampanya yun? Immigration Commissioner, dalawa, may video ko. Dala-dala yung maleta, kinukuha doon sa Soler. Kakanain nila, sinama pa si Wally Sombrero. Di ba kahiyaya kayo dyan? O ano gagawin natin sa mga ganyan? Ano lumalabas yun? Kaya, I mean, gusto ko yung enforcement officer makakalabas to enforce that. Pa, paano nakakalabas yun? Dapat may intelligence kayo uh, na yung sa Tagayan, lumipat sa Clark. Tapos sa Clark, marami palang pumapasok na ni walang visa. Correct? Di ba, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Eh, ganun yun eh. Actually, maraming involved. Sina na lang na ipip. Buti nga sa kanila. Kung makita mo tuloy, uh, talagang tagusto di ba ang siyong kawalangan, babawasan ng 1,000 para hindi maging plunder? Anak ng bakaw. Wala akong kaawa-awa dyan sa mga taong yan. Well, what are we going to do about that, Jimmy? Uh, sir, we are 
Kunti usually uh, uh, strengthening our counterintelligence uh, uh, capability. And uh, we are in constant coordination, sir, with uh, the other law enforcement agencies, particularly NBI, PNP, uh, uh, to help us our ranks. Dapat yun, Jimmy, pag lumalabas yan, sinasabi sa iyo. Dapat nagre-report sa iyo. Anong ginagawa? Nagpupunta sa Secretary of Justice, Brad Dillay. Nagkita pa sila sa hotel eh. At dala-dala pa yung pera doon sa uh, fraternity ball nila. Nasa maleta, sa kwan. Kaya mo, gago kayo talaga. Yun eh, dapat. On you yun eh. It's on you. Dapat, may operation. Right away, ako, pag nag-ooperate kami sa Red Cross, I have an operation center. I, they tell me how much water we've done, nasaan yung payloader na nag-clearing, nasira yung payloader, o oh, ilan na naibigay niyo yung giyero, ilan na bigay niyo yung pera, ilan na bigay niyo yung pagkain. Dapat talaga, hawak mo talaga yung tao natin. O oh, ano, ano, how do we legislate that? Uh... We have learned our lesson, sir, on uh, that particular incident. And, uh, uh, we are putting in more, more safeguards. So, if I were you, I would study that situation so that you can prevent it. I remember there was a shooting by the end by the FBI. And dami namatay sa FBI, dalawa lang ang kalaban nila. Napanood ko lang sa city again the other day. Uh, that's historic. Ginagawa nilang training film yun. Kung paano mag-stop ng moving vehicle na may mga barel, dalawa, patay sila. Apat ata na FBI na matay, dalawa lang na buhay. Yun, inaaral yung film na yan. Dapat inaaral nyo yan. Paano nangyari yan? How do we avoid that? Yan ang sinasabi kong uh, management. We'll do it, sir. Do that. I would appreciate that very much. Thank you, sir. Ilan na lang ang nagmamahal ng bansa eh. And then finally, uh, Chad wants to talk about student visas. Chad, go ahead. Anybody else who wants to stop, please stop now. Or forever, hold your thank peace. You. Thank you, thank you, uh, Chairman. Thank you, Your Honor. I would just like to point, uh, although Chad will be coming up with a... Um, with an official position on the matter. But we do not want to also lose this opportunity that finally, after several years, we're able to modernize the immigration laws. We just noticed that with respect to the provision on student visa, uh, it, does not, uh, it does not reflect many of the realities and opportunities on the internationalization of higher education that advances mobility of students, faculty, staff, and people-to-people -people exchanges. Pre-pandemic, um, Mr. Chairman, we had more than 5 million mobile international students, which is seen to grow to about 25 million in the next 10 years. Growth is not just on the full degree, but also shorter programs, certificates, diploma, immersive learning, internship, study, holiday, visa or even cultural exchange and it is in these short programs where the philippines can truly create a niche and get a slice of the market so uh we would like to um uh, we would like that this is properly reflected also in the student visa category uh, mr chair because that is also where some of the uh the realities on the ground uh, the bureaucracy uh, student visa. i'm sorry to interrupt you but i really yes, have a hurry what is your proposal yes. to student visa? Isama nila yun? Uh, meron pong student visa, but it is, it is, it's still the old provision. We what can is the come new up provision with... that you're proposing, young lady? Uh, well, well, sir, uh, we, would add, uh, we would clearly put in there that it can also cover not just full degree, but also partial studies, uh, and that it would also allow several uh, fields and scope of the studies, like full degree exchange or short-term mobility, internship or co-op education, certificates, diploma and qualifications, immersion, service learning, study, work, holiday, pursue one to trade agreements, cultural exchange, and language training program, Mr. Chair. Any, any comments, uh, Mr. Morente? Uh, sir, we have no objection to uh, the amendment. I'm glad you don't because I think uh, student visas are a way of fostering 
international relations better and we get to know how they think. Uh, yes, sir. Think, uh, including yung mga American Field Service scholars, kasama dyan, di ba? Yung, yung high school. Lily? Uh, Mr. Chair, yes, in uh, this... Um, um, college ka yan. Yeah. Yes, sir. College kasi. Pero doon sa student visa nila, apparently they have a separate uh, provision for the high school students, Mr. Chair. Meron ba tayong provision sa high school? Uh, I'm sure meron. I remember when I was a kid, may kaibigan ako, uh, Chad, uh, ano, uh, high school, na-accidente pa kami, pinagamot ko pa, doon mo nakita kung paano kawawa. Ang BJs, eh, walang sinulid. Uh, tatahiin yung leeg. Yung hiya ako. American Field Service Scholar yun. Uh, do we have a provision for that? Or do, or do the provisions still exist? Pwede sila? Nakalagay naman doon sa loan yun eh, di ba? Doon sa, uh, can you go back to the visa status? Yung mga pinapalitan niya? Attorney Arvin Santos, please. Arjay? And then I have one more question on uh, permanent resident visa status. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm sorry, I, the provision on student visa is not included in our PowerPoint. But it, uh, let, let me look for it in House Bill 8850. Di visas. Non-immigrant, di ba gano'n? Yung kanina. Ito, o. Uh, Sa non-immigrant. For the high school, there are even permits, study, special study permits, right? Non-immigrant, representatives of accredited international organizations. Papasok dyan siguro yung American Field Service of Scholars. Pero uh, ay nakalagay dito, foreign officials and staff, media workers, exchange visitors, baka dyan pumasok. Pero dapat specify nyo. Okay, sir. Tapos yung mga refugees, di ba dapat kung papasok yung mga Afghanistan uh, people? Meron ba tayo niyan? Hello? Yes, sir. Meron tayo sa Afghans. Yes, sir. We have for the refugees. Uh, it's a specific uh, provision already. Visa category. Modernize na yan. Para to show that we are a humanitarian country. Ginawa natin sa Vietnam yan. Ginawa natin sa Hujo nung araw yan. Nung 1949. No, 1938 or 39. Yes, sir. Oh, I-modernize siya na yan. Yes, sir. Pwede ba yan, uh, Jimmy? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Are you happy, Ch Chad? Are you happy? Tulungan mo na kung ano yung language na gusto mo yes. alagay. Yes, Mr. Chair, we will include, and also we're benchmarking on the visa categories of um, of Australia, and it also reflects on graduate visas, no? so that we are able to capture those who study here in the Philippines and they are out outstanding. Uh, we it, can, uh, oh, yeah, right we can now, okay? continue. Yes, yes, Mr. Let's Chair. Right here and now, because I have another question. Jimmy, help me out. Ito, may permanent visa, resident visa, hindi nagbabayad ng tax. Ang tagal-tagal na rito after so many years, nagbayad ng tax, mababa pa. Ang dami ng kinurakot. Uh, anong, uh, anong pwede natin palitan dyan? Nakailangan pang i-convict? Or should we have the powers ng Secretary of Justice to the Immigration Commissioner can recommend na tanggalin na yung permanent resident visa without conviction or probably administrative hearing na lang? Uh, may I refer to the Chief of Legal Division, sir, for his opinion. Uh, Chairman, I, I believe violations like that can be prosecuted in a deportation case and if they are ordered to be deported by the Board of Commissioners, their permanent resident or immigrant visa will uh, also be cancelled with along with the deportation order. So it's a Board of Deportation na lang yan, ha? Board of Inquiry? Yes. Ha? Yes. It's already yes, covered, Chairman. you're sure? Yes, Chairman. Okay, kasi we are conviction, eh. Yes, Chairman. Um, in fact, the Board of Commissioners uh, issued deportation orders even against, currently, even against uh, immigrants, provided that there, uh, there is a ground for their deportation. It also includes the cancellation of their immigrant visa. Ito, permanent resident visa ito. Sino man nagbibigay yes, sir. ng resident visa? Nagbigay lang ng $50,000, okay na sa inyo eh. Siguro, adjust na natin yan. Yes, sir. No, I, I don't need a yes, sir. I need uh, I need a copy of the law. We will provide, Chairman. Provide you now, this afternoon, huh? Yes, Chairman. I don't want any questions because I really want 
Some people deported because they stole money from our country. Kasi yun, naghahanap ng pera. Nine billion yan ninakaw niya mga lintik na yan eh. Naka-permanent resident visa yan. Di kotse na magaganda. Naka-Porsche yan. Naka you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yes, sir, man. That Those can be uh, grounds for undesirability in a deportation case. Oh, tell me what should I file? Undesirable alien? Yes, Chairman. I don't need a conviction, huh? Yes, Chairman. Uh, is uh, this guy part of the quota immigrant status? Dalawa sila eh. Yung isa, hindi na bumabalik. Can you cancel that guy already? Hindi na bumabalik? Nagtago doon, kunyari may COVID. Yung pala siya ang humahawak ng pera ng taong sinasabi ko. Doon sa korporasyon, siya ang tingkakuha ng pera. Lalabas na yung decision ko dyan, dapat gumalaw na kayo kagad. Hindi, talo na naman tayo mga Pilipino. Hindi pa naman naman tayo manindigan sa ating bansa, hindi tayo ginaganon. Eh. Sinaisipa-sipa na tayo ng mga Chinese sa uh, West Philippine City, tapos dito, bibigyan niyo pa ng permanent resident visa, tapos hindi niyo magalaw. Ano ba klase tayo? I'm not biased, ha? I have the evidence. Well, are you sure? Are we? Can you write me a letter saying that I don't need to get a conviction from that guy? Di ba nakalagay sa atin, conviction? Uh, before they can be deported? Huh? Okay. Yes, we have a provision that... Uh, Omnibus rule, 2015. Yes, uh, that is a separate ground, Chairman, but we can also deport uh, based on undesirability as long as it is... Uh, based on reasonable grounds for there is a substantial ground for undesirability we can uh, order them deported chairman so we, we await the senate committee's report so we can study it and uh, do our appropriate action you know, you know that's what I, I find very disgusting in this country everybody watches the report everybody is chagrined by it immigration department of justice Gagalaw na kagad ako. Kung ako ang busman, gagalaw na ako kagad. Pero natatakot tayo. Dahil yung pinakamataas na involved, natatakot kayo. E pa, kailan? Dahil wala na talaga rule of law. Can you give me a memorandum uh, clarifying uh, that uh, what is a desirable alien? Undesirable alien? Public interest. We will uh, provide your office, uh, Chairman. Can you give me this the minute, afternoon? afternoon? Yes, Chairman. Please. Please. All right. Thank you. Ano, pare-pareho lang natin ang trabaho. Pare-pareho lang tayo ng under pressure. Oh, I, I find pressure. Uh, I welcome it. I'm not intimidated. I am not, uh, I cannot be cowed. My father has been assassinated. Between right and right, I will choose right. What about the Department of Foreign Affairs? Uh, any uh, any comments on this, please? Good afternoon, um, Your Honor. Uh, this is Jazeel Cruz, Acting Director of the Visa Division, Office of Consular Affairs, DFA. Jazeel, you na naman. Tapon, ikaw na. Ikaw na naman. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, yes. I would just like to um, manifest the contents of the DFA's position paper on this bill, which we presented at House level um, and reiterate here um, at the Senate committee. Um, we particularly have comments on um, the provision that provides for the deployment of immigration personnel abroad, because we believe this will impact on the DFA's uh, consular function, specifically visa issuance function. So our reservations on this, Mr. Chair, are twofold. One is on the practical uh, and resource um, aspect. 
uh, we believe it's uh, not a prudent use of resources given that um, pre-pandemic or under normal circumstances, most countries are already visa-free uh, to begin with. So um, deploying immigration officials who would solely be, um, or whose sole function would presumably be to um, issue visas would not be uh, the most practical use of government resources. But on the more substantive um, source of our reservation, it's our uh, position in the DFA that visa issuance is a consular function that is uh, only to be performed by those who are given that specific commission under the Foreign Service Act. So um, although the provision states, um, as it is in the House bill, that the immigration officers will not perform consular functions, um, we believe that it's a contradiction since it's our belief, again, that visa issuance is a consular function that can only be performed by um, those with consular commissions, namely those in the uh, foreign service personnel. So you're saying uh, we, an immigration we're... officer in a consular office in abroad can issue the visa, is that correct? Uh, again, Your Honor, may... Uh, in, in our view, uh, Your Honor, it is um, only the... Uh, foreign service personnel who have consular commissions that should be able to perform the consular function of visa issuance. All right, what do you say, Mr. Morente? Uh, sir, we do not have any uh, uh, objection to the request for non deployment of migration officers unless it is uh, requested by the government concerned, like in, uh, the, in Taiwan. We have uh, deployments of immigration officers. Uh, the deployment of immigration officers, uh, as of now, uh, cannot also be uh, addressed by the bureau because we, we lack immigration officers. Para lang po dito sa ating mga airports and seaports school lang pa. So uh, yeah, it is yeah, not a yeah. uh, priority, sir. It's not a priority. Okay. So you need immigration officers that you can send abroad to places like Taiwan, right? Yes, sir. Case-to-case uh, -case basis, Your Honor. Or even places where uh, there are no consular offices of the Department of Foreign Affairs? Uh, yes, sir. But uh, I subscribe to the idea of the FA that uh, our immigration officers cannot issue uh, visas. Uh, only uh, the consular office, Your Honor. Oh, you agree with them? Yes, sir. So there's no argument? No argument on that, sir. All right. We shall proceed. Now, let me go to another topic. Are you happy, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, from the DFA? Uh, yes, Your Honor. We would just like um, that to be reflected in the... Diplomat is somebody who goes abroad to life for his country, correct? Uh, <laughs> maybe in the, in the interest of that the... <laughs> that is what they say. But... Uh, Try to uh, get to the point when you talk to here in the committee because I, I, I kind of lost me. I, I have another question for Do we have a foreign agent registry, uh, uh, Commissioner Morente? I'm sorry, sir. Uh, Do we have a foreign agent registry? Foreign agent, uh, Your Honor. Yeah. Do they register? I understand. A long time ago, there was a law filed by uh, Secretary Senator Tada called the Foreign Agency Law. Agents registration law. Yeah. I remember a long time ago. May I refer to uh, Attorney Likas of the Alien Registration Division, sir? Attorney, Attorney uh, Likas uh, from the Alien Registration Division. Good afternoon, Mr. Uh, Chair. Uh, uh, for the uh, foreign ag agents, Mr. Chair, uh, we, we don't have the... Uh, uh registry for foreign agents do you recommend that we put this here that we have a foreign registration uh act here we are uh, still implementing po the uh alien registration act of uh, 1940 which is uh, the, uh, i'm just asking you have a foreign registration law yes pa. we have registration law, but we don't have the uh, uh registration for foreign agents Okay, I'll take a look at that. Kung maglalagay tayo ng foreign registration law. Yung mga agents. That will be a uh, welcome po for the Bureau of Immigration po. If it well, will be... I uh, might want to help us draft that, okay? 
as well. We will draft it. All right. Now, question: uh, Do you have an you have an alien registration permission? Is it quite pretty accurate? Um, actually, po, we have the registration uh, of uh, permanent residents, and uh, uh, what we also like to have uh, as power is for those uh, involved in the uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the business. Uh, uh, like for example, the the CESA, the PESA, we don't you have, have uh, the. You have that? Don't you have that? Yes, but uh, they are exempt from uh, alien registration laws. So we don't have the uh, exact data for them. Uh, but, but you can have that, even if they're exempt, you can have that just to be sure you know who are the agents in this country. That is part and function of the immigration to know who's in the country, right? We Yes, Your Honor. Um, we are uh, coordinating with different uh, agencies and uh, offices like Would the like uh, export law? processing zones. All, all aliens in the country must be registered in this alien registry law? That is uh, in accordance with RA562. If we will going to enforce it um, to the letter, we are uh, tasked to uh, register all uh, aliens in the country. Po. Provided, walang, walang, walang. anyway, you can do, do that online, right? Walang hassle, online. Yes, Your Honor. Meron mga tao na magpaparinyo, hindi ba kapasok dahil sa COVID? Do you allow online registration right now? Magre-renew um, we we allow the uh, online appointment po uh, just to control po uh, we are enforcing po the uh, covid protocol in our office and uh, they have to make an appointment po for uh, the transaction for for them to be allowed inside face to face pa a face to face is it online registration like we're doing right now um as of uh, now po we don't have the online uh, application for uh, registration po I think you should. Better to have something than nothing, right? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, that is one of our uh, program po sa, sa aming pong, uh, you office. You don't need anything there. All you need is the internet. Yes, Your Honor. But we... Agents Act of 1979, Batas Wambasa, Bill 39. Are you aware of that? Uh, I heard of that, uh, Mr. Chair. You have that? Yes, 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 Mr. Chair. Have you, have you implemented that? Or is it on another one of those uh, uh, unenforceable laws or unenforced laws? But, oh, yes, Mr. Chair. What, uh, what, uh, the problem that we are encountering is that um, they don't report, uh, the, the embassies, they don't report their foreign agents. Um, they don't uh, uh, declare if... Uh, this particular uh, agent, like for example, uh, from the CIA or the other agents. A lobbyist for a drug company like Deng Vaxia. Magpupunta dito yung foreigner. Maglalabi sa FDA. Di ba cover dyan? I remember cover dyan eh. Yes, Mr. Chair. Oh, implementation lang yan. Attorney uh, Likas, 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 mo yung tabaho mo dyan. Yes, Mr. Chair. Noted po. Diba? I don't accept noted. Parang kasi attorney pang secretary sa Nator Pangilinan. Noted. Wala nangyayari sa noted. We'll do that, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, so, alimbawa, uh, meron kang permanent resident visa, lalabas ka ng walong buwan. Iba, pwede pa ba yun? Uh, attorney Morente? Or attorney Dikas? Commissioner Morente? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, let uh, I would like to uh, address that uh, concern. Uh, for 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 that uh, permanent resident, if uh, he's going to go out uh, for at least eight months, uh, still allowed, Your Honor. As long as uh, he will not stay there for uh, more than five years, Your Honor. A petition permanent resident visa. Di ba masyado maluwag yon? Um, yes, lang yung kanyang permanent resident, resident visa status. Yeah, so, yes, Your Honor. But uh, if the if he stayed uh, outside the country for more than uh, five years, it's already an abandonment of uh, his uh, or her permanent visa. Po. I suppose in the natin ng kolatilya. Suppose is under uh, investigation. 
under investigation under uh, uh, the Philippines po? Yeah, either a congressional or judicial investigation or a police investigation. If he does um, the, but but the problem, Your Honor, is uh, we cannot uh, compel that uh, that person to come to the yeah, country. But, uh, but then you can compel him if you cancel his registration. If there is a uh, basis for the cancellation of the registration, we will do that. Well, if it is uh, requested by another uh, indication of guilt, sir. Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor. It goes with, uh, like, for example, for the uh, 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 the cancellation of the uh, permanent visa. It goes with the uh, cancellation of the registration as well. Precisely. That's what I'm saying. So who made the, the rules on permanent residence? Is that, is that the law or is that part of uh, your, uh, uh, your memorandum order or what? Your limitations of permanent residence visa, five years, kailangan masyadong matagal yun. Absent? That is the call of... Uh, that... America, kailangan six months, babalik rin, di ba? Yes, uh, Your Honor. Bakit sa atin five years? Uh, actually, po, we uh, are issuing uh, the re-entry permit valid for one year only, and uh, it is uh, um, renewable for uh, for another year. But some of the uh, uh, the foreigners, the permanent residents, they uh, stayed uh, uh, outside the country for uh, more than five years, and that's the time that uh, we considered those uh, persons with the uh, permanent residence consent. Okay, let, 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 let me put it into a vagratic way. When the permanent residence visa, he stays away six months. When he comes back, he rides Philippine Airlines, he comes back here, he puts money into the country, right? So yes, sir. It's our interest to make sure that he comes back and not abuse his permanent resident visa status, correct? Yes, sir, honor. But would that be restrictive? Because that's what America does. When you have a green card, you have to be back in six months, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Your Honor. Um, we only issue a, a re-entry permit. If they don't have the re-entry permit or if the re-entry permit is already expired, then uh, they will not be allowed to uh, enter the country, Your Honor. Yeah, dapat sabihin natin, in the re-entry, if you don't show up in six months uh, without legitimate excuse, your permanent resident visa will be cancelled. How does that sound to you? Unless it is provided for under the law, we, 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 we can do that, Your Honor. Okay, we will put the provision there in the law now. All right? Palako, binibigyan nyo lang yan eh. Saan ba nagaling yung permanent resident visa rule? Asa law ba yan na yan? Yes, Your Honor. It's under Section 13 of the uh, present uh, immigration law po. Section 13? One, three po. Section 13 of uh, Commonwealth Act Number 613 as amended. Can I see that, please, uh, lawyers? Apa, apa, pa share ako. Can you highlight it? Quota immigrants, not in excess of 500 or anyone national or without nationality for anyone. An alien coming to pre-arranged employment for whom the issuance has been authorized. But I must have pre-arranged employment, di ba? With Section 20 of and his wife and his unmarried children under 21 years of age if accompanying him or following to join him within a period of two years from the date. The wife of the husband of the unmarried child at 21 years of age if accompanying the to join such citizen. Send your permanent resident visa dito. Yan po yung grounds. Saan yan? Ito pang lahat yung grounds. Ground for the issuance of a permanent resident visa. Okay. Yan yung coverage sa permanent resident visa. But who issues a permanent resident visa and what are the conditions for it? May, may orders po sa memorandum for you. Sa naroon? Pero ito po yung legal. Ito po yung basis sa uh, immigration act. There's nothing there that says so many years.
a cursory look at this doesn't show me anything. It shows that uh, you can issue a permanent resident visa. Well, it just uh, hints that a permanent resident visa will apply to the family, right? And then coming to pre-arranged employment. It would have employment then. Let me begin. That's dangerous to national security. Number nine quota immigrant, does that mean permanent resident visa? Amendment to permanent status to change the permanent. No, no, I, uh, uh, Commissioner, what is your basis for issuing permanent resident visas? Maybe attorney, uh, 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 visa is it? Uh, sir, Dikas, attorney Dikas, sana kalaga yang authority to issue permanent resident visa. Uh, Your Honor, may we request Attorney Santos, the Chief of the Legal Division, to... Uh... Attorney Santos? Uh, Arvin, sir, go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Section 13 provides for the immigrant visas. It's uh, the immigrant visa category. It is used interchangeably with the term permanent resident. Um... Yeah. These visas are issued by the Board of Commissioners under, I'm just uh, getting the section, Chairman. Which section? Uh, Both the immigrants are referral, Lila. Yes, sir. Um, I'm, not, I'm just looking for it, Chairman, if you can give me a few minutes. Section 41 is Take a look at section 41. Yeah, may permanent residence be stand. Any alien, even time of the concerning whom no record or admission for permanent residence exists or can be located may apply to the commissioner for legalization of his residence. The application shall be made in the foreign manner prescribed by regulation issued by the commissioner. The applications be made within one year the effectivity of this act, except that if the commissioner is satisfied that the alien project has failed to apply, apply within the period of one year, he may accept the alien's application at any time. Wow, badly worded. Provided, however, that any alien in the Philippines whose record or admission for permanent residence does not exist or cannot be located and who shall, yeah, cannot be located or who shall fail to legalize his residence in the Philippines as provided in this action shall be presumed to be unlawfully within the Philippines. If the commissioner of immigration finds that the applicant entered the Philippines prior to the fact has maintained the residence since he entered and the other is that subject to the deportation Wala eh. Wala wala guy. Wala qualification. Can I make the effectivity of this app? Luigi. 1940 for Puerto. You're 1940 for Can you see it? Huh? Over 76. 96. So there really is no provision for permanent resident visa status. Sanyo kinuha yan. Can you look? Luigi? Five years? Without any limitations, how long they can stay? Or if they stay away? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, for the permanent resident in, in the Bureau of Immigration, um, it is interchangeably used as immigrants. 
under Section 13 and um, quota, two special laws. Immigrant. Yes, sir. Uh, not only the quota immigrants, but also the non-quota immigrants under Section 13. They are uh, immigrants or permanent residents. Aside from these, there are also two categories under special laws that have um, immigrant or permanent resident status. These are the two alien legalization laws, RA-7919 and uh, Executive Order uh, 324. 324, which are alien legalization laws. Uh -huh. um, un unfortunately, our CA-613, the Immigration Act, does not provide for limitations such as how long they should be out within the country or out how long they are allowed to be outside of the country. So these are merely covered by uh, rules and regulations that have been issued by commissioners uh, down the line, Mr. Chairman. So it's very arbitrary. Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. That's why a new law is really uh, needed that may address this. So we will address that. But anyway, even with this law, there is no justification for somebody uh, to be given a permanent resident visa. Nakalagay lang dito, quota immigrant eh. At wala pa yung pamilya. I yes, don't believe sir. that you can interchange permanent resident visa with quota immigrants. That's... Uh, that's Yes, sir. Um, in fact, there is no um, uh, definition into the law regarding permanent residence. It only mentions immigrants. So in current uh, situation, Mr. Chairman, is that is interchangeably used. Immigrants refers to permanent residence and vice versa. Yeah, a permanent resident is somebody who's married to a Filipino, right? Paulit ulit yan, like my uncle, Frank Robertson. Uh, he yan, ang araw, masing na siya. Permanent resident, permanent kuhan siya. Paulit ulit yung kanyang binibigay na, kuhan, na he's married to a Filipina, matagal siya rito. Oh. Yes, Chairman. That the only um, justification under the law is that the quota is uh, under the category of immigrants. That's why they are also deemed as permanent residents. For example, this guy, and it is 1999. This is a building. 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 This is a This is Ano ang tawag mo dyan? Anong violation dyan, Arvin? Uh, that can be um, included in uh, undesirability, Chairman. Uh, what are the grounds for undesirability? Natingin mo ngayon, undesirability of aliens? Um, um, if the acts Section ano? may constitute um, it's also undesirability is not in Commonwealth Act 613, but under uh, Supreme Court decisions, it is defined as uh, acts that may constitute to be against public interest or public order or public peace. So as long as this is injurious to the public, it may come into the ground of undesirability, Chairman. So that's the Supreme Court, all right? Yes, Chairman. Uh, uh, Supreme Court legislation in effect, right? Yes, Chairman. Because the Supreme Court can legislate laws by their decision. Um, we we also um, loosely the base of it the on versus Shear. Yes. Yes. Yes, Chairman. That's right. And we also base it on the power of the president under Act Number Twenty Seven Eleven, which is the old Administrative Code, Section Sixty Nine of Act Twenty Seven Eleven. Twenty Seven Eleven Administrative Code. Yes, Chairman. Right away, guys. My God, napaka-loose natin eh. Kawawa tayo eh. So, I hope that you will find yourself a statesman when the decision of the Supreme of uh, the Blue Ribbon comes out. Whether it comes out or not, whether it comes out, it will show the undesirability of these individuals. In the middle of a pandemic, it was proven that they uh had a plan plunder of the coffers of the government to the prejudice of the filipino people
I'll pray for you. <laughs> Arvin, uh, can you text me your number? Uh, we'll do so, Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, Thank you, Chairman. I mean, we're trying to do this as much as we can for the benefit of our country. Sana gawin natin lahat yan. I mean, I, I don't know na my idealistic streak has not been removed. Madness of all to see life as it is and not as it should be. Ito nakalagay dito, RA7919. Tama ba ito, Arvin? Alien Social Integration Act of 1995. Must have entered the Philippines before June 30, 1992. Payment of integration fees. 100,000 upon filing application. 50,000 per year for two years. That's right, Chairman. Uh, so as far as the BI is concerned, we only consider immigrants or permanent residents to be those mentioned in Section 13 of our immigration law and RA 7919 and Executive Order 324. Uh, any other, only those are immigrants, none other. So that is exclusive, Chairman. Oh, yeah, no? So, no? Kasama siya? Okay. Hindi siya kasama. Tama. Oh. Good work. So, yung taong ito, do sa Alien Registration Act, pumasok siya, 1999. Dapat naka-register naka na siya before 1992. Alam niyo naman na yung tinutukoy ko, ano? Hindi po kasi sinabi ng hari, gagawin na natin lahat. Sundalo ka, you follow the law, right, Morente? Commissioner Morente? Uh, very correct, sir. You follow the commanding officer, the lawful duties of the commanding officer? Yes, sir. But when the lawful duties are legal, there are ways to do it. Not necessarily by a coup. There are no provisions sa Article 4 niyan. Ay, nako. Thank you. Uh, are we okay? Uh, are we all right, Commander Morante? <laughs> As we say in the PMA? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, all here. Are we all right? All right, sir. All right. Uh, thank you. Alvin, thank you very much. You've been most helpful. Uh, uh, Captain, uh, uh, Captain, uh, Attorney, Attorney Luke, uh, Lucas, what? Lucas. Lucas. Lucas, sir. Lucas. 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 Pahias. Diba? Sa command, because pahiyas. All right, and uh, thank you, Chad. Uh, thank you, DFA. Are there any more comments from the peanut gallery? I'd like to finish this. I wanted to tell you now, my staff will work on this right now. I need the inputs of the budget. Kung ayaw ng budget, ilaban natin sa floor. Okay sa yun, Jimmy? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I will fight for you. Because I really think your position is clear. I don't want one size fits all. Yes, sir. The government, we are the Senate. We are the ones that hold the presidents of the country. And we should not be hamstrung. Bye. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ma'am. Uh, it's not against you. But I think we should really, Balu, Balu Aganon, it should really follow what the Constitution provides. The budget is only advisory. Na hindi natin magagawa yan. Pero ang dami nyo nang ginawa. Eh. Libre ng libre. Taas ang taas ang police. Hindi naman tinataas yung immigration. Taas ang taas yung police. Hindi naman tinataas yung teacher. Hindi naman tinataas yung doktor. Anong ginagawa ng budget nun? Ah, Miss Malu? Miss Malu? <laughs> Malu, are you still there? Yes, Your Honor. Sorry. Ah, Tumatawa ko ba? O oh, nagagalit ka sa akin. Oh. No, 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 Your Honor. We're just... Uh, okay, ko. Ang yes, budget sir. kayo ang tigahimas na huwag masyado. Eh, pero pag nakikita ko naman, nagiging unfair eh. One size fits all. Kaya yun, laki-laki ng utang natin sa pension sa military at saka sa polis. Di ba, ate? Uh, it's another bureau it's handling it, pero marami pong arrears. Di ba, ate? Laki-laki ng utang ng gobyerno sa military at saka sa polis? Uh, in terms of... Besides 8 trillion ata or 13 trillion na? Ate? Uh -huh. 
Tapos sasabihin niyo dito sa mga kailangan gumawa, kumikita naman sila, katulad ng subik, kumikita. Sinisikil niya yung budget, eh. hindi nalang may pa-improve yung kanilang kwan. Pati yung kikitain pa nila, kukunin pa ng national government para mapaganda yung kanilang department, yung kanilang operations. There's got to be a stop to that. I know you agree with it in your heart. I can see it in your eyes. Sometimes we are forced to do what we have to do by our uh, our leaders uh, who are forced to do what they are to do by our other leaders. We do not have time to see what the real uh, situation is on the ground. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Jimmy, I tried very hard for you, huh? Thank you, sir. Uh, we really appreciate it, sir. Uh, we have the Euro. Marami kong salamat. Magdasal na lang tayo na may ahabol namin. Kinausip ko na si Mix. Lalabas ko itong report. Kung may bibigyan nyo sa akin yung report na yun, ilalabas ko ito para first day, Monday, or even Thursday, papakiusapan ko, ipapasok ko na itong committee report. Papipirmahan ko ngayong hapon para bukas may pasok ko sa, sa plenary. And then, Tuesday, Kaya naman nyo, malakas naman kay Kidigong. E di sabihin nyo, i-certify ito. Kaya ni, kaya ni Maynard yan. Pag sinertify yan, one day lang, wala ng three-day rule, mapapasa natin yan. Pwede o dipindi? Pwede. Pwede, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yan lang pakiusap ko, boss. Ha? Ipinalalaban ko lang yung, malaman ko lang kung yung tao na nag-play God doon sa mga tao natin na lumalabas, eh talaga mapagsabihan naman ng konti. Di ba? Mapagaliwanag naman ng konti. Eh, umiiyak yung umiiyak yung aalis eh. Hindi naman mababa ang luha ko just because umiiyak. Pero I think it is downright unfair. Legally speaking, we have no right to curtail travel unless there is the police power of the state saying hindi pwede. Tama ba yan, Torne? Ayan. Okay, thank you very much. I will try to do my best. You do your best. You do your share. Uh, give me all your amendments within the next couple of hours. Chat DPA, BI, remind to submit the wording of amendments to the bill as of today. Today. Yes, sir. And yes, I will just suspend it in case makuha ko, I will call you again tonight. Pusa na sakali. Kahit na 12 o'clock, pasensya na kayo. Tapusin natin. All right? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Mabuhay kayo. God bless you too, sir. Thank you.